Good morning and welcome to our online service for the Episcopal Church of the Resurrection here in Rainbow City, Alabama. Our service for today is Morning Prayer Rite 2 for the fourth Sunday of Easter. You can find the service and follow along with it in your prayer book if you have one with you, um, starting on page 77 in the Book of Common Prayer. Or you can follow along with our service bulletin found either in the timeline below for those who are watching this live or in the comment and the uh, description for the um, video recording later. You can also in those same sections find a link to the lectionarypage.net um, lessons for today so you can follow along with the readings as well. We'll begin our service for morning prayer now. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now turning in your bulletin or in your prayer book to page 79, uh, we will do the confession of sin. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, Lord, open our lips to which the response is, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And then we will say together, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now, uh, turning in your bulletin or to page 82 in the Book of Common Prayer, we will sing together the Venite, so please feel free to join along with this setting if you know it. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, 
and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our service continues with Psalm 23, found in your service bulletin, or rather found on the lectionarypage.net readings. We will say Psalm 23 together in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Acts of the Apostles. The believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came over everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added their number, those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Our first canticle is the first song of Isaiah found in your bulletin or on page 86 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please feel free to sing along if you know this setting. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, 
Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure, endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. The words for the Song of Mary can be found in your bulletin. If you wish to sing along with the canticle, you can find the setting on, in the hymnal on S186. S186. Feel free to sing along if you would like. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In Bishop Sloan's first book in his series, Jabbok, we have two characters that are really in polar opposites in being servants of God. If you haven't read the book, I'm not giving um, really anything away that's going to be important to the plot. Um, and if you're looking for a good read uh, during this time, uh, Jabbok is certainly a good read um, to have. But one of these characters, one of these two characters that represent service to God, is Jake Jefferson. Jake is a pastor who Buddy, the main character in Jabbok, meets when he is very young. And Jake becomes a friend and a mentor to Buddy throughout the rest of the book. Jake is a very charismatic person. He is not terribly well-educated, but he knows scripture incredibly well. And Jake is able to elucidate what's going on in the scriptures. He's able to illustrate and set forth uh, what it says in a way that really captures the attention of people. And this includes um, the people that Buddy eventually uh, goes to seminary and studies with. And then on the other hand, there is one of Buddy's uh, seminary professors, Dr. Sprague. Now, Sprague is someone who it, it very much uh, lives into the pomp and the circumstance of being an academic, of being a seminary professor. Uh, he lives for that power that it affords him, and he lords it over uh, Buddy and others uh, just for the sake of being able to, just because he can. There's not a lot of servant in Sprague. Sprague really just seems to be out for himself. He really just seems to be in the line of work that he's in, not for the glory of God, but in order to build himself up, in order to build up his 
reputation um, and prestige. Now, I mention these two characters, and I mention um, Bishop Sloan's book, Jabek, because both Jake and Sprague represent people that many of us have met along the way. Many of us, thankfully, have known Jakes or known people like them. People that when we listen to them, we think, yes, this person has this word that we need to hear. That we latch on to what people like Jake say, not because they're building themselves up, not because um, we necessarily want to just follow that person, but because when we listen to them, we hear some truth, we hear something important, we hear a word that we need, that we need to hear, that we need to have in our lives. And so people like Jake help connect us to something that is beyond them and beyond us as well. Sprague, unfortunately, is also a person that we know many people like, that we've met many people. These are the people that are in the work of serving God for the accolades that they can receive. They are there in this role because maybe it gives them some little semblance of power. But when we stop and listen to them, what we really see isn't somebody who is a servant of God, but somebody who's in it for themselves. And so the words of people like Sprague don't really resonate with many of us. They don't really connect. We don't want to follow them because we don't hear the same truths, the same fervor that we hear from people like Jake. There may be some that do follow people like Sprague, but mostly they're the people that are also searching for this kind of power. Or maybe they're just people that haven't fully seen uh, the reality and truth of what is going on, of, of what people like Sprague are really all about, at least not necessarily at first. Now, aside from giving us a sense of people in our own lives, Jake and Sprague are both helpful to us because they give us an illustration of what we hear in our gospel reading this morning. They give us a sense of the voices that Jesus tells us about. Because there are these two voices here in the gospel. There's the voice of the shepherd, and there's the voice of the thieves and the bandits. And we know from this passage that the voice of the shepherd is the one that we are supposed to listen to. So for us as sheep, how do we recognize the difference between the voice of the shepherd and the voice of of the thief and bandit? How do we know when we're listening which voice it is that we are actually hearing? Well, we do that through what we hear of that voice, the voice of the shepherd, of what we hear about from our scripture today. Because the voice of the shepherd is the voice of one who isn't speaking out of any sort of gain that they could get for themselves. But those voices, that voice of the shepherd, it is a voice that speaks to us and tries to help and protect us. In our reading from Acts of the Apostles, we see this sense of help. We see the community coming together to help one another, to nurture one another. They give their goods away or they give them to be in common for the whole community. 
the people doing this, they're not doing this out of any motivation for themselves. This isn't helpful to the individuals at all. Instead, this is something that helps others. This is a way in which we hear that voice of the shepherd in our lives. That voice, that voice of the shepherd is one that is there with us to help guide and protect us, even through the worst of situations, even through the valley of the shadow of death, as we hear in the 23rd Psalm that we said together this morning. The voice of the shepherd is one that suffers, and not because of something that the voice has done uh, that deserves that suffering, but the voice suffers for doing those things that are right, for doing those things which the world would not have us do, for saying those things that the world does not want to hear. The voice of the shepherd, as we hear in our epistle from 1 Peter this morning, is one that is willing to suffer, even if what they are doing is right. They are willing to suffer unjustly in order to be there to help us. And in that suffering, as 1 Peter tells us, that suffering is the very same suffering that we see in Jesus. Jesus didn't have to come down and be with us in this world. It was no benefit to Jesus to come down and be with us in this world. No benefit at all. Jesus did that in order to help bring us back to God, in order to help restore, renew, reform our relationship with God. And when others saw what Jesus was doing and didn't want the people to go to Jesus but wanted them to go through them, through them instead, those people who wanted to keep God away from the people, or at least be the mediators between those people and God. They saw what Jesus was doing, and they didn't like it. And so they caused Jesus to suffer unjustly. But Jesus suffered anyways, and again, suffered so that we might be led back to God. Jesus got nothing out of anything he did. But what Jesus did was solely for us. The voice of the shepherd is really that voice that points back to the one true shepherd, the good shepherd. The voice of the shepherd is the one that points us back straight to Jesus. The voice of the shepherd is the voice that speaks for Jesus. It's the voice that Jesus speaks to us through. The reason that people like Jake in Bishop Sloan's book, Jabbok, reach out to us in this deep and intimate way is because they're not speaking for their own sake. They're not speaking out of any benefit that they might gain from it. They're speaking for the Lord. They're speaking the words of the Lord. They're making it so that their voices are the voices that God uses to speak to us in the world. Those are the voices that we're called to listen to. Those are the voices we are called to follow. Those voices that draw us in by speaking the truth. 
those voices that draw us in, not because they're speaking for themselves, but because they're speaking for Jesus. So whose voice do we as the sheep follow? We follow those voices that aren't out there for themselves. Those voices that might seem altruistic at first. But as we look under the layers, we find they're not so altruistic after all. They're speaking for themselves, not for God. The voices that we are to follow are the voices that speak for Jesus, the voices that Jesus uses in this world. So ultimately, as you are trying to figure out what voice should you listen to, the voice you listen to should ultimately be the one that says, don't follow me. Follow Jesus. Our service for morning prayer continues in your bulletin or on page 96 in the Book of Common Prayer. And now let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers, which can be found in your bulletin or on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you, to which the response is, and also with you. And now let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our service continues with suffrages A, found in your bulletin or on page 97 in the Book of Common Prayer. The suffrages are a responsorial prayer. However, to make things easier, I will say all the parts. Um, and please just join me in on the part where you see an R by it which stands for response. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. 
Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And now for the collects. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity, but in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs, that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weaknesses and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son had nowhere to lay his head, Grant that those who live alone may not be lonely in their solitude, but that following in his steps, they may find fulfillment in loving you and their neighbors. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now for the prayer of mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you at this time to offer up your own prayers, uh, whether aloud at home or within the comments below or within the confines of your heart. Lord Jesus Christ, for all these prayers on our hearts um, or that we have held up to you aloud, um, hear them um, and help us to continue to feel your presence in our lives, that we may always know that you love us and that you hear us. We ask all these things in your most holy name. Amen. And now our service will conclude um, in your bulletin or on page 101 in the Book of Common Prayer with the general thanksgiving, which we will pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. To which the response is, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. That concludes our service for morning prayer. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we um, will um, have another service on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, that will be live on Facebook as well as on YouTube. Um, recorded later. So please uh, join us for that service um, on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And please join us next Sunday once again here at 10 a.m. Uh, live on Facebook and uh, with the recording uh, posted later to YouTube. Um, thank you um, all again and have a blessed Sunday and a 
blessed and healthy week to come. See you soon.